sometimes when we think of how the Lord uh, does mission, we might actually disagree with his tactic or technique. Uh, we might say, well, Lord, if there were more miracles, right, if, the, if, if there were more supernatural phenomenon, people would believe, you know? And you might think of your brother or sister who isn't practicing, your son or daughter who isn't practicing. If there was some kind of a miracle, right, they'd believe, wouldn't they? Like if we were able to show them something supernatural, then they'd believe. And, and I know I've had this thought. Uh, and because if you could show something that, 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 that reveals this supernatural element uh, or, or that confirms what we preach and teach, what's written in the Gospels, what we celebrate in the liturgy, all of these things. If there were to be something supernatural that you could say, there, see, that can't explain that one for me now. No, with your big scientific head in you. All right, explain that. Uh, if there were to be something that you could point to, surely it would just make our, our missionary job so much easier. But what's interesting is, in reality, that's not necessarily the case. As in, it's not necessarily the case that if people see something supernatural or see a miracle, that they convert. That's actually not necessarily true at all. Uh, I know one particular person who, uh, who had a supernatural experience, had a, had a miraculous healing, and it led to a, a temporary faith, and then eventually they, 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 they veered away as well. Uh, I remember the Cure of Ars speaking about a lady who had had a stroke, actually, and she was relatively young. She was in her, her, her late 20s, and she was just very embarrassed by... The, the, the droop she had in her face and um, she just, you know, her, her dream was to, was to get married and so on and so on and so forth and she came <clears throat> over and over again to his masses and confessions and all sorts uh, of, of prayer was, uh, she begged for prayer and anyway, eventually the Lord granted her a healing so her, her everything, everything came back to, to the way it should be. She was delighted with herself and uh, her dream had been to go off and get married and she did and then with her busy life and everything going on again, she started to veer away from the faith, veer away from her relationship with the Lord. And for, this was a real lesson like for the, for the Curie of Ars, he thought like, oh, it's incredible. One would imagine that if you receive a gift like this, a miracle like this, you'd spend your days thanking God, rather than now that I have this gift, I'll forget the giver. I'll forget the gift giver and actually start to, to move away from him so then maybe it's actually better off that I be left with a cross that reminds me of my need for God, that keeps me in touch, that keeps me praying with, for this intention, that keeps me coming to Mass, that keeps me coming to, to prayer services, healing services, and whatever it may be, rather than be healed and forget God. Okay, so we see this in, in today's Gospel. It's very interesting. So, so um, Peter and John are, are preaching and teaching, and they're doing so with great confidence. Now, um, it's quite unlikely that they would have been able to read or write, okay? They may have learned so down the road. It's actually quite unlikely that they even did. Um, so even like the things that they wrote, uh, it's possible that they would have had a scribe, so I'll dictate to you and you write. But Peter especially, very, very unlikely the guy could actually read or write, which means they couldn't actually read the scriptures for themselves. They'd have to go to a, a synagogue and, and <clears throat> one of the scribes or whoever, the Pharisees were there, and they would read, or someone who, who could read would read the scriptures. But very few people, there, was no, like, there weren't organized schools. It wasn't compulsory school attendance until you were 16. So if, you're, if your dad was a fisherman and look at 11 years of age, you're able to do your thing, out you went on the boat and that was it. That was the end of your education. So to have these men then standing up and preaching so confidently, right? The rulers, elders, and scribes were astonished at the assurance shown by Peter and John, considering they were uneducated laymen, right? So they're just common folk. And yet they're with, here they are, like, uh, under the noses of those who just killed Jesus and preaching with great confidence. Now, uh, we heard over the last couple of days the, the, the healing that they worked, you know, gold and silver, I have not, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, walk. So they see this, this miracle. Now the miracle has worked in public, everyone sees it. And if we listen to the reaction of the scribes and Pharisees, it's they don't deny that a miracle has worked. What are we going to do with these men? It's obvious to everyone in Jerusalem that a miracle has been worked through them in public and we can't deny it. But to stop the whole thing spreading any further among the people, let us caution them never to speak to anyone in this name again. Hang on. They don't deny that a miracle was worked. A miracle has just been worked. How did a miracle come about? Like, 
through whose power? Through how, how, how did it happen? See, this is a whole point like of what Peter and John were saying. Was it, was it yesterday or the day before? Uh, yeah, don't think like that. We worked this, but it's through the name of Jesus that we worked this. So Jesus, well, Jesus' word is shown by actions, by the actions. So he, he proves that he is God through his actions. So the apostles proved that this Jesus, whom you killed, who rose from the dead, is now alive and active in his church. And to prove it, here's a miracle. So you would think, ah, oh, we have a miracle, so there we go, that, that's, that, should be, that should be evidence enough that what they're saying is true. But it's not. And the, the readings will, will go on to show that the, 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 these same people, scribes and Pharisees, begin to punish, threaten, uh, ostracize the apostles. Right? They, they flog them. They're imprisoned. All sorts of things. Okay? So the miracles actually didn't convert them at all. Miracles worked in front of their eyes. And that wasn't enough. So maybe, maybe working miracles isn't actually what will convert people. If a heart is closed, it's closed. And miracles, I think we, we can probably overestimate the, the effectiveness of, of a miracle in converting someone. I think if someone doesn't want the Lord... No matter what miracles they see, they'll come up with their, uh, some sort of an explanation. It was a solar phenomenon. It was a, a double exposure on the camera. It was, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not a healing. It's just remission. You know, they'll, they'll come up with, with some rational way of, of making the miracle disappear. So let us not think that miracles, um, that if God isn't working miracles, that he's actually uh, making a mistake and that the mission of the church would be so much easier if there were more miracles. That said, I do believe that in the future, as the church becomes, as a church is renewed, and people um, can be granted miracles without those miracles becoming a danger. Remember, if we're granted a, the miracle of a healing, and then use my healthy body to sin, it's better I don't get the healing. If we need money for something, like to, to I don't know, re restore a church or, or in your own personal situation, uh, finances are, are, are problematic and the Lord grants you a lot of money, but you do, with that money then, you, you do good things, right? You don't become selfish and superficial. Uh, then the Lord can grant you a miracle like that without it endangering your soul. So I have no doubt that as the church becomes renewed and, and our hearts become closer to him, he can and will work more miracles because they won't be a danger to us. So, so the Lord does know what he's doing. That's why then also in, in the gospel, uh, when Jesus uh, appears to the apostles, uh, he reproaches them. He gives out to them for their incredulity, for not believing. Why? Because I've, I've proven my word by my actions. I've proven what I said would come true through people who saw me. Believe. Believe. On this day, which is uh, traditionally <coughs> uh, dedicated to Our Lady this Saturday, one, what was supposed to be the, actually the point of the homily, uh, is uh, the idea which I, I think we can kind of skip over. At times we can be so focused on doing things and maybe for those of you who, who, you're, who are a little maybe deeper into the faith and learning more about the faith, and, and, and wanting to go deeper, wanting to know more and, and, and do more and be more involved and get more done. Uh, this kind of lots of action and, and, and that in the church, which is, is, is important, it's part of what we do. But what's really important not to forget or not to lose sight of is that in, in our church, in our faith, since we refer to God so often as Father, we have to also allow time to simply let ourselves be loved. Just to let ourselves be loved. To sit there in the Lord's presence and not allow our brains just to, to replay the day and replay our mistakes and replay our hurts and what I should have said and what I should have done and what I have to do tomorrow. And so while we're in the chapel or in wherever it is, we're not actually in prayer, we're just thinking. But to actually f can't try and calm all that down 
and let ourselves be loved. It, it's very easy to say. In practice, it, it's, a, it's a little harder, but it's not, a, it's not impossible. It's not, as, it's, not as, it's not as hard as we think if we just try, if we kind of try and keep in mind what I'm supposed to be doing here. And you can do this anywhere, like in a car, traveling around, just keep your eyes open if you're driving, um, wherever you may be, to actually just let yourself be loved. I remember seeing a, a movie which shall remain nameless because I wouldn't be advertising it. Uh, a good while ago, it's a, it's a spy movie, and there's a lady in it, and she's apparently quite attractive, and all the lads find her attractive. And okay, so, um, but you can see in the movie that she doesn't want all of this attention, doesn't want all of this uh, desire, or to be honest, lust. Uh, she doesn't want all of that uh, leveled at her, aimed at her. She just wants to be held, you know, by someone who cares. The movie never gets as far, obviously, as them falling in love and getting married or anything like that. But she just simply wants to be to be held, it's like just a long embrace. That's kind of just to feel safe and feel not lusted over, but just wanted. And it's that kind of I- I- idea that that we can have with God, where where we're, just, we're we're in His presence and we're just we're embraced by Him, and we're wanted. We're we're desi- He desires us. He desires our love. He desires our our time. And we don't have to actually do anything. We don't have to present him, you know, the, the catechism and say, well, thou Jesus, look, I'm after reading this much of the catechism, you know, uh, or I'm after reading this much of the Bible or whatever. That's, see, she's like, that's, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Can you just, shh, just, shh, just, shh. Just be quiet a sec, all right? And just let yourself be loved. Stop feeling we have to do something all the time. And, and it, it can happen, uh, especially I think in our Irish understanding of the faith, that this might, it might, might be something we have simply never done ever. Because in, in the Irish understanding of the faith, it, it's always we have to be doing something. You have to be praying something. You have, you know, the rosary beads have to be going. Don't get me wrong, love the rosary, big fan. But it's, we don't have to be doing these things all the time. The, 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 like, it's like, it's like, it's like a rela- any relationship, right? Where you're, you're with your husband or your wife, and it's good that you talk to them. It's not ideal if you talk to them incessantly. It's not ideal if you just keep just verbal vomit at them and they haven't a, a, a chance to answer back or just to simply be in each other's company and not talk, just to enjoy each other's company. You know, so th- this can happen in our prayer lives so that we feel uh, when we're with God, Jenny, we have to be talking, we have to be talking, we have to be talking. Where's the Bible? I'll read this page and that page and that page. Hail Mary for the grace and this page and that page and that page. Time's up, gone. And, and there's my holy hour. And it's, 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 not, it's not the worst, but I think we can do better. I think we can do, we can do more by doing less. By doing less. Just letting ourselves be loved. So we ask for that. We ask for that grace today, as as we think of, of everything that the, that the Lord has has done for us and given us all the miracles miracles that we have seen. We look back in our lives, all of the the exams that we passed that we never should have, all the the, the driving tests, parking spaces, husbands, wives, children, healings, jobs. Um, financial difficulties, all the things that we've, we've gotten through, uh, all the graces that we have been granted. I mean, we've, we've, we've seen miracles. Also here in Holy Family, we've seen absolute miraculous providence, which is great. And now that we've, we've, we've seen these, these proofs of his love, let ourselves be loved. Let's just let ourselves be loved. I don't have to do anything I don't have to say anything. I don't have to earn it. I just have to receive it. Lord Jesus, renew our hearts, renew our faith. Help us to recognize you in the silence. Help us to receive your gaze and your embrace. Amen.